and you can just, in the beginning, okay, burn up everything, nobody, okay, you can't afford to do that. You can't afford to do that. I'm not you, the person talking. You can't afford to do that. I don't care if everything is paid for. You can't afford to do that. See? So you must be going somewhere else with that. And I know where you're going. When you say Jesus saw the widow giving her might, he said, oh, boys, she gave more than everybody. People been thinking the widow might is a dollar. No. The widow gave out of her living. The rest of them gave out of their excess. In other words, I ain't going to need this here. Let's give it to the church. But the widow, she came down and brought her paycheck. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. That's why Jesus, him and the boys was leaning, watching, watching everybody give. And he said, hey, hey, she gave more than everybody. Some of them may have given $1,000, but she gave more than everybody. Because she gave out of her living. She said, forget 10%. Here, take it all. And so on the grace and truth, when you talk about generous giving, it's like, well, Lord, you've done so much for me. Take it all. Or if you speak to me to give $1,000, I'm going to do it. See? So I'm saying, before we all people rejoice and we free and master and let us go, y'all better be careful because you'll be right back in debt, spending your money on stupid stuff. Amen. Okay, that's enough of that. So uh, we ain't, we're not mad at nobody, but, you know, we, 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 we want to, if it's working for you, work it. If it ain't working for you, then pray and ask God what to do. But uh, the God I serve supplies all of my needs according to his riches and glory. Amen. And he, served, he, 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 he supplies all the needs of his people. Amen. Amen. Now, I hadn't always felt this way. It took me a long time, you know, to, to believe that uh, it, what I had uh, belonged to God. But see, the 90% don't belong to you either. And that's where we've been. We'd have made our mistake. So it ain't like, forget the 10%, let's go put that on something else. No, no ma'am, no sir. We haven't told you enough that the 90% is his too. Amen. And you can't say that he's your Lord and he speak to you about the 90% and you, hey, man, get out of here. I gave you 10%, leave me alone, spirit. He'd be like, whoa, wait a minute now. Yeah. Yeah. It all belongs to him. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. So that's to all my friends who may have getting overly excited. Uh, not, you got to listen to sometime a message you develop. Yeah. Amen. So God love you in Jesus' name. Let's pray. Let's move on in the word. Praise God. Hallelujah. God is so good. Brother, would you give me that cord and cut that, that TV on real quick? I think I'm going to show something that was sent to me first. Amen. How many love Jesus? Amen. Well, I hope you do. Praise God. Amen. Oh, shoot. I, got, I left my other cord and everything. Mm. I mean, my thing is in my bag, but that's okay. Praise God. Those of you who may be watching us, amen, a big God bless you to you. Amen. We thank you for watching uh, this broadcast, watching the Shepherds for Old Ministries. Amen. Here, and we, uh, we appreciate, amen, your attention to the Word of God in this house. Amen. All right, I was going to show you something that uh, was sent to me, but I didn't get my setup, and so I'll just tell you. It was Marvin Winans. You can look it up yourself, you YouTubers, and it's don't take it personal. Amen. Amen. That little gray thing in my bag, go back there in my bag. You see a little gray thing I put in the side of here. Bring that, and I'll play it later. But listen, when you hear the Word of God, we should take it personal that God is speaking to us. But we shouldn't take it personal that those who are sharing it with us is trying to pick on us. Y'all ain't going to say nothing. You're going to make it hard here now. Come on. When we hear the word of God, we should always take it personal that God is speaking to us. But we should never take it that someone is picking on us. Amen. It is the reason we can't share the word outside of our fellowship with one another. You know? Are y'all with me here? 
Amen. So praise the Lord. Let's go to the book of Numbers, chapter 16. Because the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Y'all believe that? You do? Well, he, he owns everything. And we are his people. And God is coming back for a people without spot, blemish, or wrinkle, or any such thing. How many believe that? Yes. Amen. He's not coming back for church buildings. He's coming back for a group of people all over the world who are without spot, blemish, or any such thing. Now, I don't know what the such thing is, but I can imagine it's iniquity. Okay? Iniquity is hidden sin. So, faith come by hearing. That's how we get faith, y'all. Faith come by hearing. We have to hear something to provoke us. When we're sick, we need to hear a word about sickness or read it and speak it out loud to provoke healing in our body. When we're, when we're weary, we need to read. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. See, you don't get faith just by going to church. Hello. Just like it was preached about tithes, I could start. No, it's a little slender thing. It, it should be. It's in there. It's a little slender deal. It go on the side. It's silver. Uh, I could say the same thing. You don't have to come to church. You don't need to come to church. And a lot of people, they think that's working for them. But see, the enemy is always after your dedications. Come on now, talk back to me. The enemy wants your dedication. You are Samson. Samson ain't just one person with long hair. You are. Thank you, sir. Here, hit the, hit the, hit the wire in the TV. I mean, the TV for me. Amen. Amen. You are Samson. Look at somebody and say, I'm Samson. I'm Samson. Yeah, you are Samson. That means that you somewhere... You have to have made a, made a dedication before God or, um, or you, you could have no fellowship with God. Can you say amen? amen? You have to have made a dedication with the Lord or you could have, had no, you could have no fellowship with the Lord. Amen. amen. Praise God. Amen. You have to have had fellowship with the Lord. Praise God. Let's just worship for a minute while I find this. Amen. Come on, worship with me. Praise God. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise the Lord. Praise Him. Oh, this may not work out because I didn't even do the volume. That's all right. I just want you to see that God sends his word to bless us. Amen. And only those who don't love the Lord. Give me a mic. Praise God. I'll try to make it bigger. Hold on here. Give me a mic. This is worth hearing. Praise God. Praise Him. Can you say praise the Lord with me? Send it to Him. Okay. I'm sorry, brother. I should have done that. Let's praise the Lord. Come on. We're at home. Don't mind. Anything else? We're at home. Come on, praise the Lord. Come on, praise him with me. Praise him with me. Praise him with me. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Come on, praise the Lord with me. Open your mouth and say thank you. Stop being afraid. Stop being afraid. Open your mouth and say thank you. Hallelujah. 
Stop holding back. Open your mouth and say, thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise him. Praise him. Come on, praise him. Praise him. Let's praise him while our brother find that. Pull that up for us. Amen. We got to change our attitude toward God and his word. Toward this life. Come on. Praise him. Amen. Come on. Praise him. Say thank you, Jesus. Amen. You're kept by his word. You're built up by his word. You got to love the word. You got to love the good. It's all good. But you got to love the part that's easy. And you got to love the part that's not easy. Come on. This stuff done been tried by fire. Hallelujah. All right. While he gets that, and we'll let him interrupt me when he, when he gets it. Let's go to Numbers chapter 16. Amen. Numbers chapter there 16. There will be times All right. that God will speak through you to someone, and they're going to not like you because of what God told you to say. My pastor. Jesus said it this way, you hate me because I tell you the truth? I cannot stop telling you the truth because I get some dislikes on Facebook. Can't stop telling you the truth. One lady wrote on there and said, haven't we canceled Marvin Winans? I can't take that personal. Because I didn't call myself to preach. And you didn't call me to preach either. All right. That's something there for we. us to remember. That's, that's good. That's good. That's something for us to remember. Not to take it personal as to when someone is sharing with us. You know, as I said, a lot of time when we're we, uh, we need, we need to, to encourage one another, but you, we encourage one another in the word. We discourage one another from walking a certain way, but the word is the truth. We got to quit being offended because of the word say. All of our counsel means nothing unless it comes from the word. Amen. All of our preaching means nothing unless it comes from the word of God. Amen. The word of God is living and it's forever. Amen. Amen. And uh, we got to, we've got to give God freedom to speak through the man of God, the woman of God. We've got to give him freedom to do so. We cannot say, I don't want to hear you because you know something about my problem and you preach my problem in church. Amen. You better get away from that because that's pride. Amen. Amen. You ain't the only one got a problem. Amen. And it ain't all about you. There's people watching that have problems. There are evil spirits of lust. So if we talk about lust in this big old house or small house, however you want to look, do you think you're the only one dealing with lust in America, in Africa, in China, in Europe? So you can't take it personal that you, you just repent, change, Amen. prostitution. Prostitution is going on in America. I misspelled that word. Prostitution is going on. That means sex for hire. Means that uh, if you take me out, I'll, I'll give you something. Amen. You, and you think that if we talk about that, somebody's in church, in the house of God, and the preacher's supposed to, 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 to hold back. If we got a thousand people, you can talk about it because that don't mean you're talking to them. But if you only got ten people, well, you better pass over it because, you know, there's a prostitute among us. Get out of here. That ain't how the word is done. The word is settled forever. We got angry people. You think you're the only one deal with anger? You think that anger that happens in your life, in your family, between you, in your heart, even if it's just ang you angry, you think all these people are addicted because they ain't angry? Folk get angry and go get a drink. Past the liquor store. Ain't nobody arguing with them people. But they get angry. They get right in their car and they go to the liquor store. Folks smoke because they get angry. You ain't never seen that? Get angry, man. You pull a, pull a cool out. 
pop the, the wick and smoke on it, take a big drag on it, it calm you down. It's in every movie. Some of you used to be smokers. And that's when you, got, you go to smoking, when you got angry. Man, give me one of them. You take it and pop it, and then you cool off. You think about it for a minute. Uh, addictions come because people are angry. Stubbornness. Stubbornness is everywhere. Depression. Death is all over the land. Pride. Transgenders. Amen. We ain't got, no, got to be quiet because transgenders might get offended. Well, straighten up. Shoot. All the lustful people got to straighten up. The word of God is set forever. We ain't got to tiptoe around your sin. Uh, witchcraft. We ain't got to, if you think that if we talk about witchcraft in this house, witchcraft ain't all over America. You pass it every day. Some of you work witchcraft at some time in your life. Witchcraft is disobedience. That's what it is. It's rebellion. Amen. Lying. People, my God, take the parameters off of God. Amen. You can't ever grow if you said offended because you couldn't, the person that ministering to you, you don't like that person. Amen. 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 Unfortunately, you don't have any control over that. That's right. Masturbation. Amen. The stores everywhere to help you. Christine's store. All over town. Other stores. To help you in the nighttime, in the daytime. Come get some toys and play. Uh, perversion come out of that. People get on the internet and, and cruise stuff. Get on the internet and take pictures showing each other doing this kind of stuff. You think that we just got to be quiet because it's a few of us? The devil is a lot. When you call to preach the gospel, you're called to cry loud and spare not. Crawl, cry loud and spare not. God ain't trying to build a church full of people that are full of lust, prostitution, anger, stubbornness, depression, and we just sang each other to death. That ain't the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is to rid people of it. Pride, your stubbornness, your addiction, your bitterness. Don't say you ain't never been bitter. Some of you bitter right now. Bitter over something. Bitterness is when things are not working for you and you got salt. You feel like salt done been poured on you. Some, you, you feel... You feel like, uh, uh, you know, you're angry, but you don't know what to say. Praise God. Jealousy happens everywhere. We preach about jealousy and envy. Amen. It happens in every church, in every ministry. Why do you think all them people sitting at home, a lot of them got jealous, got envious, unbelief. All this stuff happens. These are things that happen to human beings, people who claim to know the Lord, people who walk with God are under attack. And it is the job of the preacher to show from the word of God how God deals with unbelief, jealousy, envy, revenge. You don't think oh, you're a Christian and you go to church, you can't get a revenge spirit in you. A spirit that you say, okay, I'm going to do this. Or I ain't going to do that. I know what I'll do. I'll show them. Da, 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 da. You can get a revenge spirit in you. You may, may, not, may not do it like what we call the world. The secular people do it. Go get a knife and shank somebody. But you, you can get that. You, that can touch you. So we've got to get out of the place that we feel like that somebody's preaching at us. That's why people are sitting at home. I don't want to go. I won't just hear how good God is. Well, let me tell you how good he is. He's good enough to point out what's wrong with us so that on that day when that trumpet sounds, we will be ready. That's how good he is. He's good enough to wash us with water by the word. Amen. When we hear these things and even pride, pride, we all are the children of pride. The devil uh, uh, mess with Adam and Eve. Pride came into the earth. You can't say well, somebody talking to me. Who the person? They got pride too. Everybody got to deal with pride. You got to deal with pride just to be on time, uh, on your job. You got to deal with pride just to do what they ask you to do. You know how many times have you been in the break room with the rest of them, tearing up the supervisor, talking about that? Hey, them white folks over there. If you're black, the black folks, them black people don't do. You know pride. Pride. You get around with people and you chop it up. That's pride. The boss said, move that, that bell, pick up that cotton, and I want it done now. And the Bible says you got to do it 
even if they got a froward mouth. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says you are not just required to work for those who are nice and sweet. I'm paraphrasing. He says, but even those with a froward mouth, that means that they don't talk to you like you a child of God. But how many times have you said, hey, I don't like the way they're talking to me. And God is like saying, they're paying you, ain't they? And your pride come up. That's what the word of God is to say that they are your masters. And you are not to give them eye service. I mean, here they come. Let me grab the broom. Okay. Let me type. Here they're they, they coming through. No. It says that you are supposed to treat them as your masters. Now, why would we bring that up? Because it's in the word. And it shows that there's a root somewhere in us that says that if you're not going to get the job on time, if you're not going to do what they ask you to do, then you're going to do what you want to do in other places too. That's all that means. It means that as a Christian, we're supposed to be exemplary. We ought to be the first ones there. We ought to be the last ones to leave. I know you don't believe that, but that's what some of the supervision is looking for. They can say, forget the performance report. That's why you call, you call uh, 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 Molly a flunky. Because every time the supervisor come out the office, she's like, oh, what do you need? Oh, can I help you? And y'all like that, flunky. No. She is giving service Amen. to, and service is what gets you promoted. Amen. Oh, That's right. Come on. Amen. Uh, she becoming a servant. He becoming a servant. Amen. Now, you can hang with the group, and you think if you've ever been a supervisor, you anointed to see. You may not say nothing, but you say, you know, every time I look, I see these two chit-chatting, and I see, mm-hmm, that their work ain't getting done. Now, I ain't going to say nothing right now, but come performance time, uh, guess what? I'm picking that one over there. Amen. Because you're in that position, you anointed to see. People deal with loneliness, fear, and murders in the land. My God, people getting shot going to, to, a, to the... To the Rodeo, not the rodeo, to the parade, to the parade, to the parade. Could happen in any city. So the word of God is not so that everybody can feel comfortable. The word of God is to expose where the enemy, the adversary is working so that we can drive him far out away. That's what shepherding is all about. That's why he calls us overseers. Somebody say, you act like it's your church. No, it's God's church, but it is the shepherd's job to oversee. And oversee means to supervise. Amen. That's why people are sitting at home. They don't want to be overseen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I mean, you can call it what you want. They don't like the church. They don't like the preacher. They don't like somebody in the church. But the real problem is, and I'm not kicking at you. I'm just going to tell you the truth. We ain't got but a little time together. They don't want to be overseen. Hebrews 13 says that there's somebody that has to give an account for you. Amen. That's right. That's right. That means you have to humble yourself. That's God's system. And guess what? There ain't nobody want to give an account for another human being. Amen. Not even the ones that you married to. Amen. Your kids. Who wants that job? Amen. So anybody that God an overseer job and they tripping cause, uh, on something because they get to say, say, say. It come to them first. They got to walk the line. Amen. That's right. And God can't use no coward soldier. They used to sing that back when I was coming up. Now he used all kinds of cowards. Mm -hmm. God got all kinds of people. And some of us, some of us in the world don't need no more sugar. That's right. We need truth. And we need somebody ain't scared, their reputation is on the line, and they ain't about how many people they can get to their church. Because if you want to do that, you can do a whole lot of stuff. Monkey shine. That's right. But when you know you got to stand before God one day, you will be a witness for him. And that ain't just for the preacher. That's for everybody. I got to do this because I do know I will stand before him one day and give an account of what I've done in this body. He ain't going to let me Amen. know what I know and just sit around. Amen. Do you hear me? And you ought to be glad somebody love you enough and love God enough 
when you find them kind of people, whether they're in your family, that'll tell you. Because hardness won't tell you. They're like, keep doing that, Brother Bill. Yeah, God understand. And when the day of reckoning come, God won't understand. Because we, we're called to warn. Let's look at the Bible in the book of Numbers. Amen. Now, this scripture is in the word of God. And if it's in the word of God, it's relevant. Amen. 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 It says in the book of Numbers chapter 16, verse 1, Now Korah, the son of Ishtar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, and Dathan, and Abiam, the sons of Eliab, and On, the son of Peleth, sons of Reuben, took men. And they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous, say famous, in the congregation of men of renown. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said unto them, You take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Wherefore then lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord. Now here's what's going on. We've got people who have given up on God and the kingdom of God and the church of God. And we have people that are in the church of God that they, they get affected by Korah, by Dathan, and by Abiram. And here's, here's what they do. They find those who are princes or famous in the congregation. You find people who say they know God. They can be sitting at home getting all they got on YouTube. And you find them people. And you let those people... Tell you that the men of God, Moses and Aaron, that God's order, they take too much up on themselves because everybody.